emerald by day, ruby by night. When we talk about alexandrite, that phrase comes up pretty often. Now, is it exactly that? Not really, but it does give us a window into what we call phenomenal gemstones and what is probably one of the most famous and certainly one of the most valuable, that is alexandrite. We're going to talk about that today. Welcome back, and if this is your first time here, thank you for coming to the channel. I'm Andrew, your average jeweler. Today we're talking about a gemstone, alexandrite, and it's a fun one to talk about because it falls into the phenomenal gemstone category. What do I mean by that? I mean it does something interesting, does something unique, and alexandrite is well known for its color change phenomenon. And color change can vary from gemstone to gemstone. Alexandrite is not the only color change gemstone, I would argue that it's the most famous color change gemstone. You actually find color change garnets, you find color change sapphire, um, there are other varieties where you do see that. But alexandrite has become so synonymous with color change, it's really the, the hallmark color change gemstone, maybe even the hallmark phenomenal gemstone, um, but you have other things like opal that start following into that conversation. So one thing I will go back to is I talked in the introduction about alexandrite often being called emerald by day, ruby by night. And while there's some truth to that, and it can very much look like that, you really shouldn't go into it with the expectation that alexandrite is going to look like your finest emerald and then transition over to looking like your finest ruby. That's not really how it works. While it is true that the finest alexandrite can have a beautiful green hue to it out in daylight and have a very nice reddish tone uh, at night under more fluorescent, or not fluorescent light, but more warm light, candlelight, it's going to look a lot more red. Um, it does have slightly different hues than those vibrant greens and those rich reds that we typically think of. Um, usually it's a little bit more of um, a bright olive green, uh, maybe like fine peridot in some cases, but again there's variance in that. And there's also variance in the red hue that you see. A lot of times fine alexandrite will have a little bit more of a purplish tone to it. And so the variance can, can obviously fluctuate, but usually when you have a fine green color, you're gonna end up with a very fine red color. And that's something that you see in your top quality alexandrite. Like every gemstone, there are various color variations. There are also different qualities. Now the fine alexandrite that I'm talking about can get some of the highest values and pricing of any gemstone. That's including your rubies and your diamonds, Fine alexandrite is highly valued. It's a very rare gemstone. It's hard to find in nice qualities. You can find it in lower qualities and still get some of the same phenomenon. Now in the lower qualities, you're not going to get those rich, saturated, vibrant colors. Usually they're what we consider to be a little bit more muddied. Um, they often don't have that, that vibrancy again to them. They can start looking almost a little bit brown. Um, maybe in the reds you get kind of like a dark orangish hue to them, and in the greens they just start looking, again, kind of a muddied color. And usually that's what we think of when we think of lower quality alexandrite. But in its nicer colors, it is amazing to see. Now I will get into some buying tips and a little bit of a guide for those of you that are thinking about purchasing alexandrite, but I wanted to take just a minute and talk about some of the history, where the stone comes from, where the name comes from, and maybe you already know because of the name, but alexandrite was originally discovered in Russia back in the 1820s, 1830s time period, and it was in the Ural or Ural Mountains. I'm sure I'm butchering the pronunciation, not an expert there but it became very popular and very prominent with the royals because it was new, because it was interesting, because it was beautiful, and it was named after the Tsar Alexander II. Now this is the same Alexander who was assassinated in the late 1800s, but he did have some things to his name, and Alexandrite is one of them that continues to carry on as his namesake. 
Now since then, they have found alexandrite in multiple locations, most notably uh, Sri Lanka, uh, where they also find sapphires. You can find it in East Africa, where there are a lot of different gemstones, and Brazil. Um, in fact, when they were starting to exhaust a lot of our resources when it comes to alexandrite, Brazil was one of the big locations where they found alexandrite, where it kind of rejuvenated alexandrite, and we were able to get a reasonable supply again. Uh, we felt like we were coming to the end of that gemstone, and because of a big find in Brazil, we now at least have some to go around. With that said, it is starting to look like it's running out again. Um, again, this is a very rare gemstone, not a lot of locations in comparison to others, and so it's yet to be seen if they're going to find more of it or if we are in fact starting to run out of our supply there. So on another practical note, it's always good to talk about the durability and the hardness of a gemstone. Alexandra is actually very good. Uh, I would even say it could be a good choice for a ring, and there are not a lot of gemstones I'm willing to say that about. Uh, sapphire and diamond being the two typical options for hardness and durability, but alexandrite is right below them, uh, corundum, sapphire being a nine, alexandrite's about an eight and a half uh, in comparison to um, other stones that we often think of. It's actually a little bit harder or right around the same hardness as something like a cubic zirconia. So again, very durable, um, something you can wear in a ring. I'd use a little bit more caution than something like a diamond, but still very durable gemstone, excellent choice. So what is it and how do we get color change phenomenon? As a mineral, alexandrite is in the chrysoberyl family. Now chrysoberyl is a stone where you'll sometimes hear that name by itself, or maybe you'll hear about another phenomenon, which is cat's eye, where you have ch chatoyancy, chatoyancy, which is where there's uh, inclusions running down the stone in a way where you have a line shifting as you move it. Uh, this is something that is obviously very interesting. It's another phenomenal characteristics. Sometimes you get the two of these together in the color change and the cat's eye. Um, but the point being, you'll hear chrysoberyl referred to um, just as itself, or maybe you'll hear someone talk about cat's eye chrysoberyl, certainly the most famous variety, alexandrite. Now the color change is quite interesting. It has a lot to do with just how light reacts with gemstones. Um, of course, when we see color in most gemstones, it is based off of how the light is reacting to it, what light waves are being absorbed, and the chemicals that cause that. With alexandrite, you actually have um, this very close line on, on the refractive index, and it's just really interesting to see how, as it's exposed to something like fluorescent light, you have the atoms that get excited and they jump um, in their covalent bonds and not to get too technical but the point is that it has to do with the light exciting the atoms and it literally changes the way that it absorbs light so when you have it exposed to the more fluorescent the more daylight you're going to end up with those greenish tones and when you give it more of a warm light something like a candlelight you're going to end up with more of those red tones Another fun fact, maybe not a lesser known fact, is that alexandrite is a birthstone for the month of June. It shares that with pearls. Uh, pearls, possibly the more traditional option, although alexandrite being the more gemstone option. Uh, something that I find to be very common when people talk about their birthstone and they're in June is one, if they're looking to put it in a ring, alexandrite is of course a much more obvious choice. But on the other side of that, Pearl tends to be a much more easily attainable stone. Even in its highest qualities, you generally don't see the kind of prices that you see with alexandrite. And that kind of moves me into the portion where I want to talk a little bit about buying alexandrite. If you're interested at all in shopping around for alexandrite, there are definitely some things you want to know. Now I'm not going to talk about specific pricing because for one, prices fluctuate all the time, they go up and down. And for two, it's very hard to give you generalizations with something that varies so much. In the same kind of conversation as diamond, alexandrite can be all over the place. Um, you're talking maybe a few hundred dollars for, um, for a half carat stone that might not be too exciting, um, all the way up to thousands of dollars for something the same size if it can in fact be a much higher quality. So again, huge range, uh, not to get too specific, but just to give you an idea. 
if you start thinking about nice diamond prices, nice alexandrite prices are right up there, probably even higher most of the time. With that said, you're going to find a lot of lab-created options, synthetic options, imitations. Um, in fact, not an uncommon one is that you can get synthetic color change sapphire that is often meant to imitate alexandrite. You also do have actual synthetic alexandrite on the market. Um, Chatham, the company that originally synthesized emeralds, is a prominent one for lab-grown alexandrite. They do tend to make one of the more convincing options. The way that they grow it is a little bit closer to how you would find it in nature. Um, the point being, you do want to be aware there are a lot of different synthetic options. Of course, if you're looking within a lower price point, those might be your only option. At least be aware that if you see a price that seems too good to be true, it's probably not natural and you, you should know that going into the process. So treatments is always something we have to talk about when we talk about any kind of colored gemstones, but especially those that have a higher price tag, uh, because treatments tend to make a big difference in the highest tiers, um, because it's much easier to make something look good than to start out with something that's just naturally beautiful. I would say heat treatment might be the most common thing you run into here, and heat treatment is generally accepted, uh, but again, you want to at least ask about potential treatments that might happen to these stones. Um, some of the other treatments, of course, dyeing, impregna impregnation, those kind of things are going to be less common in a stone like alexandrite, but you should know what you're getting into. A follow-up to that, this is another great candidate if you're buying any stone of size or value, especially once you start getting into the carat size plus in alexandrite, you really would want a reputable lab report to go along with that. Uh, just to make sure that everything has been checked, if there are treatments you know what they are, and most importantly that you know that it's a natural stone. Now, of course, it's hard to hit everything in a video like this, but I tried to co cover some of the common ground, some of the interesting things, some of the scientific things, and hopefully some things that will help you if you do decide to buy Alexandrite in the future. I hope that if you get value out of these videos that you'll hit the like button and also consider subscribing and maybe sharing it with friends, others that might enjoy these kind of topics. We're here to learn about gemstones. I'm here to try and help you learn, and I hope we're doing it together. Again, Alexandrite, phenomenal gemstone, can be really expensive, but if you have the chance to go check it out, I hope you'll do that. It's a beautiful stone. We'll continue this later. We have other phenomenal gemstones that I want to talk about, but as always, thank you for coming. I hope you come back so we can keep learning together.